Schweitzer, William Shakespeare, humanity's greatest playwright, and hell's most diabolical purveyor of entertainment, looks on as a brave mortal on an Orphean quest enters. The bard's interest is piqued, and he looks to test his visitor's metal. The masked tragedies were used to enemies cowering as they approached, but soon they realized that they faced a foe with courage and nobility, traits uncommon in the fires of perdition. Is all hell's got to offer? The inciting incident resolved. The time had come for rising action. This is good. The battle raged on below, and as bullets and blood flew, the bard arched a curious eyebrow. Could this mortal be the exact thing that Shakespeare needed? And now, Act 3! The conflict resolved. Shakespeare eagerly awaited meeting the champion that dispatched so many of his men. Undoubtedly, they were here for the Bard's aid. And while happy endings were not a thing found in Hell, Shakespeare always had a soft spot for companies. In the land of the living, William Shakespeare is regarded as one of the most prolific playwrights of all time. However, to the denizens of Hell, the Bard is seen in a far different light. After selling his soul for fame and adoration, Shakespeare served in Hell as Satan's spy master general. In doing his duty, Shakespeare would punish the souls he was investigating by forcing them to perform in grotesque passion plays for Satan's amusement. But in a Twelfth Night-esque twist, Shakespeare found himself living a double life. While he projected an image of cruelty, his heart was as soft as Jezebel's. In secret, he would tutor her on the classics and act out the works of his mortal days. When Satan found out, he cast Shakespeare out of the palace, believing that the poet would be tormented by the populace of Hell, far out of Jezebel's sight. But Satan had not counted on the bard's cunning. Embracing his persona of master torturer, Shakespeare and his followers, the tragedies, 
took root in the entertainment district, biding their time for revenge. And so Shakespeare called forth the deus ex machina to bestow our protagonist with the arcane power of horse stomp. Lights up. The mortal stands in the training grounds, eager to try out his new force stomp power on the group of demons in front of them. Your suffering will be legendary. Part one, scene two, in which our protagonist kills more demons with force stomp. Act two, in which our protagonist is greeted by foul imps. which our protagonist learns that Force Stomp even works on flying enemies, enabling them to remove a dark insider's shield. But the day is won, and the curtain closes on our noble hero.